In this video, I'm going to talk about excessive temperature split from return to supplier side of a piece of HVAC equipment. Many HVAC companies don't utilize the power of artificial intelligence or know that they can. If you're like me, you may harbor a small and unfounded fear of AI thanks to the Terminator and the Matrix. Free to Grow is a service that finds AI voice solutions for home service companies. AI can answer the phone overnight or during high volume situations, all while learning how to be better with each call. This means more satisfied customers, less employee turnover, and a higher earning potential. AI is here now. Go to free-to-grow.com or visit the description of this video to learn more about how this service can help your HVAC company. Some of you have commented that you were curious about some of the issues that would cause an excessive temperature split. Like if you had, for example, you needed an 18 degree split from return to supply, dry bulb temperature, why would you have a 22 or 23 degree? And there are a few different reasons for that, and that's what we're going to talk about here today. The first reason is the location of measurement. Now, a lot of you know that we use radiant heaters in the wintertime. They're really popular. There's little space heaters. I have some in my shop sometimes when it gets cold in the wintertime. But there's radiant cooling effect as well. And if you put a probe too close to your cooling coil, basically you're about a foot, two foot away. You have good line of sight to the cooling coil from your probe. That can actually cause an errant reading that will read as colder than it actually is. When you're measuring the temperature coming out of your system, you want to be a few feet down the duct to get away from having that error occur. So you might have a 24 degree split measured, which is excessive in most every single case, but it's actually something like 20 or 21 because you made an errant measurement because of the location of the probe. So make sure you're moving the probe down the duct work a little bit, not too far, you know, you go five, six feet down the duct, you should have a pretty good reading then. Our second example is low airflow. If you have a target temperature split, let's say you're about a 50% humidity and you're looking for 17, 18 degrees of split, but you're getting 21 or 22 degrees. Low airflow is the most likely issue that you're gonna face. Now you can measure airflow directly with any number of different devices, but the causes include blocked filter, blocked HVAC coil, is basically anything that inhibits air flowing through the system, whether it be filtration, a crushed duct, a blocked coil, anything like that can cause lower airflow than what you actually want to see. That's gonna cause your split to go up because you're gonna have higher exposure times on that coil as the air moves slowly across it. Now there's another common measurement mistake and that is measuring in part of the airflow but not the complete airflow. If you have a system that has a return trunk and you have maybe five or six returns coming off of that trunk going to separate areas of a house or business, if you measure from one of the return branch runs, it may vary widely in temperature from another branch run. So to get the proper measurement, you have to go all the way back to the equipment itself. Like you could measure the temperature in a front room exposed to sun that has a different thermostat setting, perhaps it's a zone system, and you might have 76 degrees, but in the back room that has a different thermostat setting, it might be 72 degrees. Now, if you measure in one of those two locations, both of those are gonna be incorrect because you're gonna have a mixture of air entering the system. So you wanna go closer to the equipment, make sure you're not even tucked slightly into one of the return air flows that's away from the main trunk because you're only gonna get that particular trunk's readings. So you have to make sure you get the entire airflow and if you have outside air being introduced into the return duct, make sure you're including the outside air because your system's having to condition that outside air and you don't want to forget about that. You can make comparisons on either side of the outside air about what the temperature is in the return duct, but that would be only just to see for your, whatever testing you wanna do as far as how much load is being put on your system. If you want the true return air, you have to make sure you're getting what's going into the coil itself. I hope this helped you guys and gals out there in the HVAC trade. I'm going to make a post or short uh, video in the next day to announce our winner for the second giveaway and make sure you are tuning in for that. It could be a post, so I might make it nice and short and sweet and put it on YouTube as a post. So make sure you check for that. In the next 24 hours, you should see that appearing, if not already. I might already do it. I don't know. I'm not positive when I'm going to release this video. So you should see it within 24 hours of this video. That is a very long way to tell you that that giveaway is coming up really soon. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, God bless each and every one of you, and I'll see you on the next video. Save 8% off your order at truetechtools.com by using the Shop Talk discount code.